Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, so my name is Marina, and I'm going to talk about unit testing with signon.js. Uh, Spy took stubs and mocks today. So about unit tests. So as developers, we all know that testing our code is really important, and we want to test uh, every uh, unit or small function in our code base, ideally. So they, they make up the foundation of our applications, and we want them to be stable and not break when we add new features. So with, if we have a good suite of test specs, we can be sure that we're not um, breaking any previous functionality. We don't want to end up as a cowboy coder. <laughs> <laughs> so, so unit tests are great, and we want them everywhere. But what if we have um, functions that, that have outside dependencies, like AJAX, um, like set timeouts, network calls, or file access calls, etc. So for example, if we had an AJAX call in our function, we would need to have a server that provides responses to your requests. But what if we don't have access to the server, or if there's some other issue with the database? We want our tests to be um, kind of isolated from the state of the network. So we could possibly set up like a test database that sends the expected responses, but that would require some extra work on us. Um, it would complicate the unit tests and generally make our lives harder as developers. So, so one solution to this problem is to use a library like Synon. So Synon is a popular library that can make your unit tests more powerful. Um, as a side note, Synon, this package name is based on a character in Greek mythology who was involved in the Trojan War. So yeah. So as the official site explains. Uh, this sign-on provides standalone test spies, stubs, and mocks for JavaScript. And it works with any unit testing framework. So we can use it with our favorite framework, such as Mocha. So what exactly are spies and stubs and mocks? So they're all kind of types of what, uh, what were called uh, test doubles. So test doubles. Um, so I said that we usually don't want anything external, like database calls to influence the outcome of our tests. So just kind of like how stomp doubles do the dangerous works in, in movies, we kind of use test doubles to replace troublesome parts of the code and make our unit tests easier to write. So the first test double I'll describe is one that you're probably most familiar with, which is spies. So spies are pretty, are relatively simple, but they come packed with a lot of functionality. They can record information about function calls, like the number of times it was called, um, what arguments they took, the return values, what this value is, or if there were any exceptions thrown. So in Sion, there's two types of spies. There's anonymous functions and spies that wrap methods in our code. So now we're going to go over a simple unit test example using spies as anonymous functions. So here's a function that I'm going to test called test me. And it's very simple. It just takes a callback and invokes it. And here is a Mocha style test that uh, is just going to check whether the test me function calls the callback. So within the it block, we have a callback spy uh, made by invoking sign on dot spy. And then this is anonymous anonymous spy. So then we call the test me function using the spy that we just made. And then we can uh, have a line there to check that the callback spy has been called once. And this should return true if we this test pass if the uh, function is actually working. So in case two, we can use a spy to wrap an existing method. So what does that look like? Uh, here's a really simple example with a set name function and a user object. 
So all it does is take a name and sets this dot name to name. And so here's a unit test for this um, spy example. So we set the set name spy to a sign on spy, taking in the user object and the set name uh, method. Um, then we can call user dot set name with a name. Then we can uh, do something similar to what we did before which is uh, checking if the callback has been called once. We can also check arguments, for example, uh, expect set names for to have been called with Harry Potter. Um, so one important thing to keep in mind when using uh, spies to wrap uh, existing functions is that we need to call restore dot restore to remove the spy and prevent future errors in our test specs. So I'm going to talk a little bit about assertion styles used in unit tests, since I didn't explain it before. So sign-on comes, actually comes with its own set of assertions, um, like shown here. All you have to do is import sign-on, and you can use them. If you prefer a chai style, should and expect type assertions, you can also uh, use sign-on with, like sign-on spies with a chai style. Um, yeah. So there's another option, which is to use a, a module called signon chai, which connects the signon with chai style um, assertions. So they look a little bit more natural, at least to me. So you can say my spy or expect my spy to have been called with foo instead of uh, the second example, which is expect my spy dot called with foo to be okay a little awkward. But there's no one uh, correct assertion styles, so be feel free to use what you prefer or what, or what you think is, looks the best. So now I'm going to talk about the second type of test double, which are stubs. Stubs are really powerful. Um, they come, actually come with all the functionality of spies, but they replace the target function instead of just spying on them. So. So when you spy on a function, the function's behavior doesn't change, and you if you want to change the behavior, you have to use a stub. So stubs have methods that can add custom methods, like you can force the stub to return a specific value, or throw at an exception, or invoke callbacks with arguments that you provide. You can even do something like define uh, the behavior of the stub on an nth call to that stub. So when would you want to use stubs? You could use stubs to replace Ajax calls if you want to prevent calling the database or trigger a different code path depending on the function output or even testing what happens when a particular exception is thrown. So here's one example with a, a jQuery post, so Ajax call. So all, all save user does is take in a user object and a callback and post to slash user zero using uh, the object with the first and last name and then invoke the callback. So in this unit test, I'm going to first create a sign on dot stub, uh, taking in the jQuery object and the post method. So this will actually prevent any calls to the actual slash users um, euro. We also need to call post.yields to make the stub call the callback it received. Um, you can also give in arguments to the yields function to provide it with arguments for those callbacks. But in this case, we're just checking if the callback will be called after saving. So we don't need to provide anything. Um, for the callback, I'm going to use a spy and I'm going to create a test user object with the first name and last name. And so now you can call a save user using the test user and the callback spy as arguments. And, and then we can check whether the callback spy was called. And we also have to remember to restore the post function. And so if you notice, you notice that there's no need to call, uh, have call the database or the Ajax 
using Ajax here. Um, another example with stubs is uh, using the same save user function. Is, um, so we're just checking if save user sends the correct parameter to the expected URL. This is a little bit more complicated than the previous example. So we have the same stub as before with the expected URL is slash users and the expected parameters with a first and last name and then a test user with um, the expected params dot first and last. So then we could call test save user with the test user uh, and providing a callback because save user expects a callback function, but we're not, we don't care about the contents of the callback in this test case. Um, and then we could expect post to be called with the expected URL and expected params. And we also have to remember to always restore the stub. So the third and last type of test double are mocks. Our mocks are similar to stubs, but they're kind of another take on them. And they can be used to replace full objects and alter their behavior. So they're mostly used when you need to stub out more than one function from a single object. And if you only need to replace a single function, you should use a stub because it's easier to use. Um, and there's one, and you should be careful when using mocks because it's, it tends to be easy to make your test overly specific on the exact implementation within the function. So your code will be brittle and easy to break. So viewer. So, uh, yeah, unlike spies and stubs, mocks have built-in assertions. You'll see what they look like soon in this example. And you have to define your expectations up front and then call the verification function at the end of your test instead of checking at the end, like with a stub or spy. So here's the function that we're testing here. Set up new user. Um, it takes in um, information with a name and a callback function, and we uh, so try to save to a, some database um, and catch if there is an error. So if we want to check whether uh, whether the correct object with correct values are passed in and to say that it only saves once, we can use a mock. So let's see. We're creating an info object with the test name expected user and a mock database. So you can see here that the database dot expects save dot once with uh, args expected user. So we're checking for multiple conditions once that it, which is that it saves only once and with the expected user arguments. We can't do that with a stubs. Um, so we set up the expectations up front, and then we call set up new user, and then we verify that our expectations were fulfilled at the end. And then we always have to restore the function so that the mock is removed. So now I just want to quickly go over best practices for Scion. So I, I had to kept, keep saying that you had to uh, dot restore the spy or stub or mock, but you can use this module uh, sign on test if you um, okay instead of calling spy dot restore you can simply uh, require sign on test and wrap the the callback function within the it block to uh, with sign on dot test so you don't need to call the restore function so in conclusion uh, sorry now so there are much more, many more sign-on topics that I didn't have time to cover, like fake timers and fake servers for testing AJAX requests. Um, and in conclusion, use spies when you just want to monitor and verify a function's behavior. Use stubs when you want to modify a function behavior and or replace code that would be difficult to test otherwise. And mocks when you would use a stub, but you need to verify multiple specific behaviors. So here are some resources I use while preparing this talk and another alternative library for making test doubles called testable.js. So that's it for my talk.